Welcome to the Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. I am Elder Markeisha Robertson. Um, we, <laughs> we are located at 2725 Old Washington Road, Waldorf, Maryland. We are here every Saturday at 11 o'clock. Please come down and join us. Amen. The title of my lesson today is uh, We Must Grow. Amen. So we must grow. It's a must. It's something that we must do. Um, it's, 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 it's going to take, it takes participation from us. It's going to take us to do something in order to grow. Because if you don't do anything, you're not going to grow. And so you're going to stay in the same place. And then your people are going to pass you. And then you're going to be sitting up there trying to figure out why you're still in the same place. Amen. <laughs> why you still why you still located in the same place. Amen. Amen. But the only person you can do is blame yourself because you're not putting yourself in the right environment to grow. Amen. 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 Um, when I was thinking about when I was thinking about this, um, I was going through something, and um, it was a lot. It was like you know how chaos is, um, and I heard I heard a sin. So, Amen. Amen. I heard I heard a sin, and so when I. Um, when I heard a sin, the um, with the with everything that was going on, it's like at that moment when everything was going on, I was it was like I was taken. I was there, but I wasn't there, you know. And so it was like I it, I removed myself from the situation. So the effect that the situation was supposed to have on me, it did not have that effect on me. And so when I was thinking about that. Um, I was just thinking about it the other day, and I was reminded of the butterfly. You know, when a butterfly, uh, the, the butterfly is just not a butterfly. It has to go through a process to become this butterfly. And so the butterfly starts off as a larvae, and it's on a tree, and it has to stay on the leaf of the tree. And it stays there sometimes approximately like four weeks before it hatch. And it comes out, and it comes out like as larvae, and it turns into a caterpillar. You know, um, and I was just looking at this, and I look at how the caterpillar goes away from the whole street, but the caterpillar eats only from the whole street. You know, and so how we're supposed to stay in the presence of God, and how we're supposed to keep our eye on our Father, keep our eyes there. You know, um, and so I was just thinking about this process, this process of growing. You know, and then I was reminded. I was reminded of the um, of the scripture um, in this Psalms 119, and is um, is Psalms 119 verse uh, 130, and it says, "The entrance of thy word give light." Um, yeah, it it gives understanding to the simple. The entrance of thy the entrance of thy word give light and it gives understanding to the simple so God is right here he's letting us know we need to get into his word the entrance of his word when it enter into us it brings light so it divides that soul area and it's bringing light it's cutting away things it's chiseling away things as it go in but it's something that we must do that's one of the things that we must do we have to get god's word you know so we just can't we just can't just go through the day and 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 don't take the time out for god you know um, this life gets very busy but we have to always be reminded that we are children of God. And if you're a, ch a child of God, then you need to understand that it comes with responsibilities. You know, so just as when I was growing up, I had responsibilities in the house. I had to do chores. I had to do this. I had to do that because if my mama house didn't have lines on her carpet when she came home, it was going to be a problem. She didn't even want you to take and step on the carpet. I'm trying to tell you. She was sitting up there. It's feet prints on the carpet. It came with responsibilities with being her child. 
okay? So, being a child of God comes with responsibilities. It's things that you must do. You must apply this word to your life. You must get this word in your spirit in order to apply the word to your life. You can't apply something that you don't know. Amen. You know, and yeah. then it was like, it was just, I was just drawn to the scriptures with the light, you know. And so then it's Psalms 119, 105. It says that thy, um, thy word, thy word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. A lamp unto my feet. When I'm walking, my feet is lighting up. Okay, and it's a light unto my path. So I'm not going left and right. It's a light unto my path. That's when I'm allowing the Holy Spirit to lead me. Amen. So, yeah. So, I was just sitting here and I was like, oh, man. Because, you see, all of these things is important in our growth. Amen. And so, then I was um, I was looking and it's, uh, it's Psalms 180, I mean, Psalms 89, which reads, it says, bless is, bless is the people that know the joyful sound, the joyful sound. Um, they, they shall walk, O Lord, in the light of thy continent. In the light of thy continent. You know the joyful sound. To understand and to know the voice of God, the joyful sound, to understand and know the voice, that means I have to be in relationship. Okay? Okay. And it says right here, it says, um, it says, um, it says that they shall walk, O oh Lord, in the light of thy continent. That right there, man, y'all just don't understand what that is saying. That right there, I'm my God. Okay, so let's go to John 14, verse um, 16 through 21. You know, when I was was thinking about this, I was just thinking about this relationship. This relationship. In order for us to go to new dimensions in God, we got to understand what this relationship is. We have to understand our relationship and our responsibility. You know, we have to come into the presence of God. This world is dying, you know, and it's only getting more and more wickeder. You know, it, but we are in the end times. It's not going to get any better. I tell my children this all the time. I said, you think COVID was something? Look, I'm like, it's worse things to come. Yeah, and so we have a responsibility, and our responsibility is to grow and to come into the presence of God. Amen. Amen. John chapter 14. Yes, uh, verse 16 through 21. Starting at verse 16, and it reads, And I will pray the Father, and he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. 17. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it seeketh him not. Neither knoweth him. Right there. Okay. So this is this is Jesus. Um this is Jesus speaking. And Jesus is saying that he's he's praying to the Father that he would give us that he would send us the comforter. And a comforter is the Holy Spirit, you know, and then it, it talks about the Holy Spirit being the comforter um, and him being the spirit of truth. And it's telling you that the world cannot, cannot see him. Yeah, but we can see him. Amen. So he can, but the world cannot receive him and um, because it sees him not. You know, the world can not even see him. So we're talking, when we having these conversations with the people in the world that don't want God, you got to understand that they cannot receive him. They don't even see him. Mm. You're wasting your time. The Holy Spirit will let you know when you're wasting your time with a person, but either they're religious or they just don't want to hear it. Mm. And I have had that happen. Yeah, I was talking to someone, they were talking about God, but the Holy Spirit said, they can't hear you. Yeah, and then you need to know when to close your mouth because you ain't got to prove anything to them. You need to shut your mouth. Amen. 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 It says, neither know him, neither, neither knoweth him. They don't even know him, but, um, but you know him. My God, that right there, it said, we know him. We're his children. We know him. For he dwells with, um, for he dwells with us. 
Amen. And he dwells in us. Amen. Go ahead. I'm Elder Zabrell. Verse 18. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you. Yet a little while, and the world seeth me no more. But ye see me, because I live, ye also shall live. Shall live also. Sorry. Mm -hmm. Verse 20. It says, At that day ye shall know that I am in my Father, and ye in me, and I in you. He right there. Stay up. Stop right there. It said that day. He said, first of all, he's not going to leave us comfortless. He said, he's letting you know that he's leaving. The Jesus was leaving, but he said, I'm not going to leave you comfortless. Okay? And so he's talking about the Holy Spirit, which he was sitting. But he said, he's not going to leave us comfortless. But verse 20 is what really gets me right here. It says, at that day, you shall know that I, um, that I am in my father. So he is in his father. Listen to this. I hope y'all get this image. He is in his father mm -hmm. and you are in me. He was. Well, so he's in the father and we are in him. Mm -hmm. Okay. We are in him. And it says right here. And, um, and I am in you. Oh my God. That is so, when I was just sitting up there, I was just like, you know what? I was like a little kid and I was just having this image how you take one cup and you put the cup right here. So, okay. So he said, okay, I am in the father. So I was like, okay. And then he said that, well, then he said right here, then he said that you are in me. I'm like, oh, okay, we can put another cup right there. And then what? Then, <laughs> I'm like a little girl right now. I'm like, because I was tripping. And it said, and I am in you. I'm like, I'm just drawn to tears. I'm like, that is so good right there. Mm -hmm. Do y'all understand how good that is? Mm -hmm. That your father mm -hmm. let you know this? That right, he is right. in you? He said that God, he's in his father, God. Mm -hmm. He said that you are in me. And that what? And I am in you. Yeah. Uh -huh. So we are uh -huh. not defeated. How can you be a defeated foe when you got yeah. God in you, when you got what? And what y'all just don't understand mm -hmm. right here. Mm -hmm. And so if you're living a life of defeat, you got to understand it's something that you're not doing. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Mm -hmm. Verse um, 21. Verse 21 reads, he that hath my commandments, yep, he that hath my commandments and keepeth them, he it is that loveth me and he that loveth me shall be loved of my father, and I will love him, and I will manifest myself to him. That is so good. He's telling you, well, you love me, keep my commandments. He said, those that love me, keep my commandments. Okay, when my mama told me to do something, and I was sitting up there being disobedient and everything else, but I would say out my mouth that I love her, but my heart was far from her. You know, mm -hmm. because I was operating in the spirit of disobedience, I didn't understand. You know, but I was operating in the spirit of disobedience. How can you say you love someone when you don't want to obey them? Mm -hmm. But I'm going to let y'all know this. It takes the Holy Spirit to help you to obey. Mm -hmm. This right here, you must ask. You must ask God. He wants you to come. He said, you are his children. What do children do? Mom, I'm hungry. Can you make me something to eat? Ma, we going to the store. Uh, you think you can buy me something? I'm hungry, Ma. Yes, they asked. Mm -hmm. So ask your father. Ask your father. He's there. He's waiting. He wants you to ask him so he can mm -hmm. give you those things. Amen. 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 We're going to go to, um, I don't throw my hands too much. Okay. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Oh, God, hold me. Okay, before, before we go to the next one, I wrote some notes. Okay? Um, you know. Okay. Okay, so I said, who is the Holy Spirit? Anybody know who the Holy Spirit is? The Holy Spirit is the Spirit of God. Okay, that's who the Holy Spirit is. Amen. What? The characteristics, some of the characteristics of the Holy Spirit. He's your comforter. He's the spirit of truth. He's the counselor. He's your helper. He is your advocator. He's your intercessor. He's the one that strengthens you. Oh, my goodness. He's the one that stands by you. My goodness, that is good. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> good to get to that. Yes. And he is a person. 
He wants you to understand that he is a person. He don't want you to call him it. He don't want you to say something told me. Mm. Okay? Mm. He is what? The one who told you was the Holy Spirit. Okay, you want intimacy with the Holy Spirit? Stop referring to him as it. You don't refer to your friend as it. He wants to be your friend. He wants to be closer than your lover. Oh, my God. That's who he wants to be. My goodness. It's, oh, I I say that little part right there, because that right there, because it's like I was just reading this, and it was just talking about, I was reading this book. It says, stop referring to him as it. How can you refer to someone that you want to know as it or something told me to do it? Okay? Look, we got to do better. Amen. Amen. Okay. It says um, he is a person who who has a personality. The Holy Spirit has a personality. Do y'all know that? We always talk about God. We always talk about Jesus. But do we talk about the Holy Spirit? Mm. Amen. Mm. He has a personality. He has a will. He has knowledge. Amen. Mm. He has a Mm. mind. Um, He thinks and knows things. Go to 1 Corinthians. I didn't give this to you. 1 Corinthians um, chapter 2, verse 11. First Corinthians chapter 2, uh-huh. verse 11. Yes. And it reads, For what man knoweth the things of a man? Save, save the spirit of man which is in him. Even so, the things of God know with no man but the spirit of God. That right there is letting you know that the, the Holy Spirit is the only one that knows the mind of God for one. Okay? And so in order for you to get to know God, you have to come through the Holy Spirit. You have to. You know, we have to, we have to take the time to build this relationship. We have to take the time to take and read our word. We have to take the time to um, just to sit there and pray. To pray in the Holy Spirit. To pray in tongues. And to wait. To hear what your father has to say. You know? Amen. Okay, so let's go to Acts um, chapter 1. Uh, verse uh, 5 and then we're going to do verse 8. Acts chapter 1 verse 5. Verse 5. Oh, okay. Acts chapter 1, verse 5. Matt, property? Mm-hmm. Oh. Here we go. Mm-hmm. Okay. Come on. Acts chapter 1, um, verse 5, and it reads, For John truly baptized with water, but ye shall be baptized with the Holy Ghost, not many days hence. So he's telling you, John, John baptized with water. But you're going to be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. Hence, that's what that means right there. Okay, verse, uh, verse number 8. Verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses, witnesses upon me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. That right there is letting you know that you will receive power once the Holy Spirit comes upon you. Okay, once once you get filled with the Holy Spirit. Okay, so we right now, the Holy Spirit lives in us, but we need we need to activate that thing. We need to have we need to have encounters with the Holy Spirit. You know, Amen. so this right here, just coming to church and doing the church thing is not enough because we need to have encounters. Not one encounter, we need to have multiple encounters. We need to continue to have encounters so go encounter, encounter, encounter over and over again. Mm-hmm. Hallelujah. Mm-hmm. Um, 
verse, um, I'm sorry, chapter two, uh, start verse one through, uh, where am I stopping? Through four. I think I told you five. Yeah, through four. Acts, Acts chapter two. two, starting at verse one. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. Stop right there. Pay attention to that. When the day, see, because before all of this came about, these men were sitting there and they was waiting on the Holy Spirit. They was waiting, okay? So they positioned themselves. We talked about where we was talking about the kingdom of God. We was talking about your position. You got to position yourself. So they were sitting in there. They was waiting on the Holy Spirit. They was all on one accord waiting. Okay, verse 2. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as of a rushing mighty wind. Stop right there. Where, where, where did the sound come? The sound came from heaven. As a rushing mighty wind. It's talking about the Holy Spirit. As a rushing mighty wind. Amen. Go ahead. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. It filled the whole house where they were sitting. This rushing mighty wind filled the whole house. Can you imagine what the Holy Spirit coming in the room? Well, I'm pretty sure that the, the hairs on their arms were standing up. Mm. Do you understand? Oh, my God. Okay, verse 3. Verse 3. And there appeared unto them clothing tongues like as of fire, and it set upon each of them. It set upon them. Amen. Verse um, 4. 4. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. That right there, they was filled. They was filled with the Holy Spirit. They was filled. Amen. We want the Holy Spirit to come in, and we want Him to come in as a rushing mighty wind. We want to have those experiences and those encounters. This is not just for the book. This is just letting you know that you can have these encounters mm -hmm. as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, this right here, this Bible, God gave it to us so we can know what of the things that we should do. Mm -hmm. He's letting us know the things to expect. Mm -hmm. This right here, is what, you have to pick this up. You only can go as far as the knowledge that you have on board. Mm -hmm. God would like to speak to you, but if he can't speak to you, if you don't know anything. Mm -hmm. So if you're not taking the time to take and fill yourself up with the word of God, what is he going to say to you? Because he can say something to you. It could be, it could be the devil, you know, because whenever the God comes, the devil always wants to take and imitate as well. But how would you know? You know, so this right here, this infilling of the Holy Spirit, y'all don't understand. It helps you to discern. You know, so amen. Um, let's go to let's go to verse 17 through 21. I think okay. I'm gonna do that. Acts one. chapter 2, verse 17. And it shall come to pass in the last days, saith God, I will pour out of my spirit unto all flesh, and your sons and your daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. Do y'all hear that? He said, in the last days, he will pull out his spirit upon all flesh. Do you understand that? He's letting you know, in the last days, he will pull out his spirit upon all flesh. But let me tell y'all this. He said, well, when he's pulled out his spirit, you got to be willing and available. You know? So are we available? That's the thing. Are we available? Because I can tell you, I always said that I was available. But life always got me caught up. I got to do this for my children. My husband needs this. I got to go drop this off. I got to do this. Where do you have the time for God? Look, God don't want to be an afterthought. Okay? He needs to be the forefront. And it needs to be a routine. This is something you need to do every day. Because he knows what? He, consistency is key. We got to understand consistency is key. God is not about to sit here and just come and what sup with you. And the only time you, what, you, what, you come and you come to him every now and then. He knows your heart. He sees your heart. Okay. So it's, it's things that we must do. Because this church, you don't understand. The things that were spoken over this church shall come to pass. Mm -hmm. But it is things that we must do. Apostle Benny used to always say, we are not here to play church. 
We are mm -hmm. not here to play church. In our private time, we need to be getting in and chiseling away mm -hmm. at the word. We need to get at our altars. We need to be praying. It's things that we need to do. Mm -hmm. And when the uh -huh. enemy says something, we need to speak back. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. No weapon amen, shall amen, what, what, amen. that is formed. Is what, here's the thing. Yeah. It says the weapon that is formed. The weapon that so is formed, but it won't prosper. Yeah. It mm -hmm. won't prosper. Uh -huh. Hallelujah. Because it's telling you in the word that yeah. you shall cut down every time. You. Because yeah. you're going to speak against it. Hallelujah. Yeah, because yeah, God yeah. made us another speaking spirit. But we can take authority as we continue to come into his presence. Yeah, Hallelujah. Yeah, uh -huh. When God sitting up there, he start opening up your eyes and you start seeing things. My children was doing something the other day. I didn't even have to go downstairs to know what they was doing. When they came upstairs, I said, you, you did X, Y, Z. What do you mean? Okay, look, what I'm not asking you is what you did. I'm telling you what you did. Mm. So what I'm going to tell you to do, you need to go out in the room. You need to go get, first of all, you need to go get your shower and go in your room. And matter of fact, stop talking because I don't want to hear the lying spirit. Mm. Yeah, I don't need that because I already know what you're doing. Mm. Yeah, because God will let you know things. The Holy Spirit won't have you ignorant of Satan's mm -hmm. devices. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. You know, okay, go ahead, Elder. You Verse know. 18, and it reads, And on my servants, and on my servants, and on my handmaidens, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Mm. 19, yep. and I will show wonders in heaven above, and signs on the earth beneath. Blood. Hold on a second. He's gonna show. He's gonna show wonders in the heaven above, and and signs in in the earth beneath. In the earth beneath. Not on the earth. In the earth beneath. Do you understand what he's saying here? It's some things that we don't know. You got to tap in the spiritual realm to see this. Amen. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. Um, and signs in the earth beneath. Blood and fire. And vapor of smoke, verse 20, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. 21? Yes. And it shall come to pass that whomsoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. My God, that right there, my goodness. God is just letting him, letting us know in the last days, in the, in the last days that he's going to pull out, he's going to pull out his spirit upon all flesh. Mm. We need to understand what we, we're, we're actually in the last days. This thing. Burning fire with the Apostle Benny Walls. To give, find us on Givelify and the Sunrise Ministry International Church. Download the app on any smart device. Create an account easy as tap, give done disciples of yeshua deliverance that never happened before oh my god it's the things that we are experiencing i want you to read um isaiah chapter six let me get to it because i wasn't but i think i'm gonna go back i'm gonna think i'm gonna go there mm -hmm. isaiah chapter six mm -hmm. um let me see I think it is verse 1 through through 8. I'll let you know when to stop. Go ahead. Okay. All right. Wait on me. <laughs> I'm sorry. Amen. <laughs> Amen. Isaiah chapter 6. Isaiah chapter almost. Isaiah chapter 6. Starting in verse 1. Yes, ma'am. Okay. In the year that King Uzzah died, I saw also the Lord sitting upon the throne, high and lifted up, and his train filled the temple. Do y'all hear this? He's saying, this is, this, is Isaiah, um, this is Isaiah the prophet saying, when the king died. So, you know, sometimes you can't, you can't get into the presence of God because of the people that surround you. So when the king died, now, now he's seeing this vision. Okay, and this vision right here, he said, and I saw the Lord sitting on his throne. Mm. My God, he saw his, he saw the Lord sitting upon his throne, and he said that his train filled the temple. My goodness, mm -hmm. verse, um, uh, verse two. 
above it stood the seraphims seraphims these are angels these are angels and these are angels of fire mm. these are angels that are close to god mm. go ahead each one had six wings with twain two and so twain means two go ahead he covered his face and with twain he covered his feet and with twains he did fly Rest so me. let me give y'all the image so these are seraphims they're angels of fire so they had they had six wings okay and so with two wings they covered their face with two wings they covered their feet and with two wings they flew go ahead verse three and one cried unto another and said holy 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 is the lord of hosts the whole earth is filled of his is full of his glory and the post of the door moved at the voice of him and cried and the house was filled with smoke do y'all hear this because the angels so they're talking about the ones that cried they said that the angels cried holy 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 okay so when the angels was crying holy 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 is the lord god of hosts okay and it says the the um the whole earth is full of his glory as they were saying this okay as they were saying this the uh the doorposts begin to shake these are angels so what this is letting me know when an angel come in the room let me tell you when an angel come in the room you ain't just sitting up in there acting like like you cool like you about to sit here and just be talking or whatever an uh, angel come in the room, you go, yeah, you, <laughs> that's it, yeah. But the doorpost shook. Amen. Verse 5. Then said I, woe is me, for I am undone, because I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For mine eyes have seen the King of the Lord of hosts. Amen. Go ahead. Verse 6. Then flew one of the seraphims, unto me having a live coal in his hand which he had taken with the tongues from off the altar from the altar my goodness okay. so the surfing flew he said he just said i am a man of unclean lips because he was before he was before the king he was before god so he said i'm a how how can i come before you god i am a man of unclean lips and so the seraphim came over he flew over, but this is the part that got me. He took the coal with some tums, okay? <laughs> he, flew, he flew it over to him from off the altar. Okay, verse 7. 7. And he laid it upon my mouth and said, Lo, this hath touched thy lips, and thine iniquity is taken away, and thy sin purged. Do y'all hear that? Right there. Be what? God took away his sins. He took away his sins. He said, and he said, and your iniquities are purged from you. Mm -hmm. This is because he came into the presence of God. Mm -hmm. Do y'all mm -hmm. understand this? This is because he came into the presence of God. It's things that God wants to do for us. Mm -hmm. It's things that God wants to do. But if we never come into his presence, it's not going to be possible. Mm -hmm. You know, when I thought about that, when I thought about the caterpillar that turned into the butterfly, it was a transformation. Okay? So just like a transformer, God wants to transform us. Okay? Mm -hmm. He wants to transform us into his image. Yes. And so the more and more we come into his presence, the more and more I always say how you walk the dog and you got to drag that dog, drag yourself to your altar. Mm -hmm. Drag yourself. Drag yourself and read your word but it talks about the holy spirit being that still small voice when you hear that still small voice go read your bible mm -hmm. go do go do it because right there what you don't understand is you're sitting up there you're transitioning in the spirit it's things that you're doing because you're being obedient unto God. Okay? Uh -huh. And so you're moving yourself. You're moving your positioning right there. Uh -huh. And so uh -huh. when he tells you to go and pray and your yeah. flesh don't want to pray and he wake you up at 2, 3 o'clock in the morning, you're like, oh, Lord, oh, God, Lord, I'm tired. I can't stay awake. No, uh -huh. you need to get up. Because right there, you don't understand what you're doing in the spiritual realm. Uh -huh. You don't understand. But then yeah. one day you'll be standing up and you'll be like, oh, my God. 
I remember when. Mm -hmm. My goodness. You don't understand. We are not a defeated foe. Mm -hmm. We are not a defeated people. We are children of the most high God. Yes. Do you understand? Mm -hmm. We are children of the one and only living God. Mm -hmm. We are children of the God that lives in eternity. Yes. That's who yes. we are. Yes. And we need to take our rightful place. But we cannot take our rightful place if we don't yes. take and get into his presence. And so I'm talking to y'all, but I'm also speaking to me. Mm -hmm. I'm speaking to me. Okay, I'm speaking to me because I've been reading this word more. And you know what? And God's been drawing me to this church to come and pray at the altar. Mm -hmm. I came here and I prayed at the altar when no one was here. You know, but he's been drawing me. So meaning I should have been coming here more. I need to come to this altar. You know, and what y'all don't understand, y'all don't understand the importance of this altar. Mm -hmm. You don't understand the importance of land on this altar. Mm -hmm. You don't understand mm -hmm. the grace that's at this altor. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Y'all need to come and experience the grace. Mm -hmm. You need to come to experience the grace. You need to come and experience the presence of God. Mm -hmm. It's a mighty move going on here. Come and join the mighty move of God. Come and join the mighty move of God. Hallelujah. 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 I did not know how this message was coming together. Because I was sitting up there, I was like, God, this, this, that. I'm like, oh, I don't even know. I'm like, but I was like, Father, I trust you. I trust you. I said, I'm going to put it here. Because if you ever look at my, um, you ever look at my stuff? It's never like, you know how some people like write their stuff out. I write some scriptures on the um, page mm -hmm. because it's just the way God did with me. So I write the scriptures on the page and I have to trust God, okay. you know, um, because the thing is, if you don't deposit nothing in, ain't nothing coming out. On, That's God. the thing. Mm -hmm. And so, and I kept hearing, you, ha you already have it in you. Mm. Yeah. Mm. So this is the thing. You already have it in you. So when you sit in here and you're making these deposits, just like you deposit money in the bank, you depositing stuff. When you're reading the word, you're making this deposit. You're making a deposit. Mm -hmm. And so when you're taking and you praying, you're making a deposit. Yeah. So yeah. you're sitting up in here, you coming into the presence of God, you're making a deposit. Mm -hmm. Okay. And so you start, start saying the withdraw when you're sitting up in here and God start rising you up. Hallelujah. So you know what? It's time for us to rise. It's time for us to grow mm. as a body of Christ. It's time for us to grow. You know what? Just what? Continue to continue to get into the presence of God. I am going to encourage you. Don't go home and do business as usual. This is not business as usual. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. God said that we are in this world, but we are not of this world. Yeah. Do you know what it means not to be of this world? We are ambassadors, okay? Do y'all understand that? And so when an ambassador comes to the United States, the ambassador is not subject to our laws, okay? So we need to understand when we are in here, we are not subject to this world. God said that we are seated with him in heavenly places, but these are people that are kingdom people. That are seated in heavenly places. Do you understand that? And so you need to take the time to get into that kingdom mindset. When you're sitting there and there, you're getting into the word of God. When you're taking the time and praying at your altar. When you're spending time with God. Then God will rise you up. Hallelujah. Amen. Thank you, Amen. Jesus. Hallelujah. 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 Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. This is the end of my lesson. But I'm just letting y'all know. It's time for us to get into the presence of God. Yes. We must. It's a must. It's a must. Okay, I am crying like John in the wilderness. It is time to get into the presence of God. It is time to get into your prayer. What they call it, your prayer closet. Go to your altar. If you don't have an altar at home, then get yourself an altar. You need to go and pray at your altar. You need to take the time to get into your work. You need to take the time to spend the time with God. And this is not only for us. This is also for our youth. Amen. Because you know what? I gave them a title. Youth on fire for Christ. Y'all don't understand. 
Just because you are you don't mean that you cannot move into the power of God. We are in the end times. Amen, 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 amen. Amen. So um, let's do it. We're gonna, I'm going to offer... I'm going to offer the um, people out that's watching a salvation because I'm not going to take this for granted that you know God. Amen. Every opportunity for a soul to come into the body of Christ, I must take that. Amen. Romans 10, 9 says, If thy shall confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and believe in thy heart that God raised him from the dead, thy shall be saved. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. That's all it takes to be saved. It says with the mouth, no, no it says with the heart, with the heart, uh, with the heart, man believe, man believe to righteousness, and with the mouth, confession is made unto salvation. If you have, do, have, you have done this, then I would encourage you to take, a, um, to take a look at the address once they upload it and take and send us an email and reach out to us because we would like to know. We would like to rejoice with you. Thank you for joining us, and I pray to see you here. Burning Fire with the Apostle Benny Walls. To give, find us on Give the Fire and the Sunrise Ministry International Church. Download the app on any smart device. Create an account easy as tap, give, done. Disciples of Yeshua Deliverance Ministry. Follow us and like us on Facebook. Send us an email. We would love to hear from you.